Hello friends, once again, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will be learning about what are eco-sensitive areas or in short ESA. I believe you might have come across this terminology earlier. And without doubt, one might think that its meaning is similar to eco-sensitive zone or ESZ. For your information, technically, there are certain degree of difference in meaning when we use the term eco-sensitive area and eco-sensitive zone or ESA and ESZ. For better understanding of ESA, I recommend you to first be clear about ESZ. Therefore, if you are interested, the link to the eco-sensitive zone video is provided in the description below or you can check my channel for the same. So, to begin with, India is one of the 17 mega diverse nations in the world. Therefore, to protect and conserve its biodiversity, multiple approaches and efforts have been adopted in the country and the conservation effort recognized are categorized into the traditional conservation method and the modern conservation method. Traditional conservation methods include the non-scientific but effective method of conservation. For example, sacred growth, sacred forests, sacred rivers, etc. And modern conservation methods include the well-defined geographical areas which are protected by the state government for the protection and conservation of the biodiversity and its natural ecosystem. For example, the national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, community reserve, conservation reserve, biosphere reserve, etc. Taking into consideration both the traditional and modern conservation method, it is important to further expand the scope of conservation in India and also to improve the mechanism and efforts for environmental protection. The concept of identifying area for conservation was introduced. Therefore, with this purpose, the concept of ecologically sensitive areas was introduced in India. Now, let us have a look at the history of eco-sensitive area in India. For your information, the concept of ESA in India is quite old and the conceptualization start all the way in 1989. However, the first time the term eco-sensitive area was officially used was when the Dahanu Taluk eco-sensitive area notification was published in 1991. For your information, eco-sensitive areas or ESA in India are identified and notified by the central government under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change or in short MOEFCC. Eco-sensitive areas are based on the provision issued under the Environmental Protection Act 1986. Therefore, if you see in Chapter 2 and Section 3 of the Environmental Protection Act 1986, this clause gives the central government the power to take measures to protect and improve the environment and to protect and control and abate environmental pollution. Therefore, this clause from the Environmental Protection Act 1986 bestowed the power on the central government that an area from any part of the country which are sensitive in nature can be granted a special status and are called as eco-sensitive areas. So, with that basic background, now let's find out what and why should an area with special status be termed or given as eco-sensitive area. An area designated as eco-sensitive areas, it is not merely just because they are sensitive to external natural and anthropogenic activities, but also because they are ecologically significant area. That is, areas are not only ecologically sensitive, 
but are also ecologically, economically, culturally, biologically, historically significant. Therefore, holistically, ESEs are areas where the natural environment can be easily harmed. Therefore, such areas need to be conserved. ESE can be defined as the area that are ecologically and economically important because the area are biologically rich, unique, vulnerable, and are largely irreplaceable if destroyed. And to further extrapolate the definition of eco-sensitive areas, so here, biologically richness means it helps in maintaining the ecological stability of the area, potentially high values to human societies, significant in conserving biological diversity. And uniqueness here is referred to the rarity of living system they harbor and are difficult to replace if lost, and uniqueness in service they offer to human society. And vulnerability is referred to the physiographic features that are prone to erosions and degradation under human and other influence such as erratic climate and historic experience. Therefore, such areas need to be conserved. Next, we'll see the steps involved in the procedure for declaring an area as an ecologically sensitive area. Let's say the state X or Y or Z has decided to propose a new area which are ecologically and economically important as ESA or ecologically sensitive area. So first the written proposal must first be approved by the state government. And once the MOFCC received the proposal from the state government, then the proposal will then be evaluated by the expert committee constituted by the MOEFCC. Then the, ex the expert committee will then take a field visit to confirm the data provided in the proposal. And based on this, the expert committee will then prepare a report and then submit it to MOEFCC. And based on the report submitted by the expert committee, the MOEFCC will then either accept or reject the proposal for declaring and designating an area as an ecologically sensitive area. For your information, for years, MOFCC have notified any area in the country as ESA based on the Environmental Protection Act 1986. However, the decisions are not based on any standards or criteria or parameters. Therefore, to develop such scientific shortfalls, MOFCC have introduced the appointment of expert committee who are responsible for deriving scientific criteria that will be used for declaring of any area as an ESA. Another additional information, till date, the expert committees that has been constituted by the MOFCCs are the Pronab Sen Committee, which was constituted in the year 1999, and the Mohan Ram Committee, constituted in January 2001 and the most recent one is the Western Guards Ecology Expert Panel or WGEEP which constituted to identify the ecologically sensitive area along the Western Guards and also to provide suggestion for how to manage them and this assignment is under the supervision of Mahadev Gadget. Next we will see what are the criteria assigned by the Pranab Sen Committee for declaring an area as an eco-sensitive area. And the committee criteria are divided into the primary criteria and the auxiliary criteria. However, later, these two are further divided and categorized into three main categories. So the first criteria for declaring an area as an eco-sensitive area is it should be species based the second criteria is ecosystem based and the third criteria is geomorphological features so species based criteria will be based on endemism rarity and presence of endangered species ecosystem based criteria will be 
the corridor for migratory species, specialized habitat, species breeding sites, area with intrinsically low resilience sacred growth, whereas the geomorphological features criteria are uninhabited island and steep slopes. So these are the criteria to be adopted for declaring any area as an equal sensitive areas. So with this information, we'll now come to the last part of this video and we'll see what are the few points that we can differentiate between eco-sensitive areas and eco-sensitive zone. And before that, for your information, please remember that the concept and purpose of eco-sensitive zones and eco-sensitive areas are the same. However, the primary differences between ESA and ESZ is mainly the extent and distribution of the area. For example, the extent and distribution of ESA is vast and can include multiple states. For example, in Western Ghat is shared by six states, Gujarat, Goa, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, and Kerala. Whereas the, in eco-sensitive zone, the extent and distribution of the ecosystem zone is within a specific surrounding of the particular protected area, be it a national park or a sanctuary. Ecosystem area promote a landscape level of conservation, whereas for in ecosystem zone, it promote only ecological level of conservations. And in ecosystem area extends beyond 10 kilometers, whereas ecosystem zone is within 10 kilometers from the boundary of the protected area. So beside this, ESA are ecologically, economically, culturally, historically important and significant, whereas eco-sensitive zones are for enhancing the protection of biodiversity and also to prevent the isolation and fragmentation of the natural ecosystem surrounding the specific protected areas. So with this, we have come to an end of this video. And these are the references that I use for compiling the information in this video. So with that, thank you so much for your interest in this video and thank you for your valuable time. I appreciate it very much. And if you find this video and my channel helpful, please kindly subscribe, like and share. Your support in any form will push and motivate me to do more videos. So once again, thank you so much and God blessed.